Hello, I'm Olga from Learn Spanish uh, with Olga, and uh, we had looked in the previous video to how to greet people in Spanish and how to introduce ourselves. And, um, you know, one of the viewers asked me about uh, going shopping to the greengrocers. And it's true, you know, you'll need to go shopping if you are anywhere um, where they speak Spanish or anywhere else. Um, and because there's, you know, a big variety of shopping, um, I thought we'd start with shopping for food. Uh, that is a pretty basic thing. We are going to be looking at a bit of vocabulary today, but don't worry, you know, the basic instructions are pretty straightforward and um, it's not very complicated, but it's a bit of a longer lesson than last week. So let's, uh, let's get going, really. So, the compras, it's going shopping, and uh, comida is food. So, you know, this would be shopping for food. So, basics, uh, what is a shop in Spanish is tienda. Remember that in Spanish you actually pronounce every, uh, every letter, and the vowels are always the same. They always sound the same, so you don't need to worry about this A, A, or A, no. Tienda, the A is always the same. Frutas y verduras, or, you know, fruit and vegetables, uh, or on a fruteria, would be the green grocers. Una carnicería, carnicería, is a butcher's, um, because carne is meat, as we'll see in a bit. So we have tienda, you can repeat, tienda, frutas y verduras, or frutería, frutas y verduras, y carnicería. If you want a bit of fish, uh, fish is pescado, so the shop is called pescadería. You see the, like before with carnicería, where we have the accent is where you actually praise the accent also when you're pronouncing it. So it's pescadería. A supermarket you recognize because it's very similar is supermercado, supermercado. And Mercado, of course, is market, so mercado. So we can, you know, repeat pescadería, you know, the accent in the I, supermercado and mercado. If you want to go, you know, shopping to a place where you'll find everything, you have the department store would be Grandes Almacenes, Grandes Almacenes. They normally go by the name. So, you know, for instance, in Spain, it's very common one that is called El Corte Inglés. And a shopping mall would be un centro comercial. Centro comercial. So we have grandes almacenes and centro comercial. And now, if you know, you go into the shop, what are we going to say? Well, uh, you know, you remember the greeting from last week? Um, buenos días or buenas tardes, depending on the time of the day. If it's in the morning, we'll say buenos días, good morning. In the afternoon or evening, buenas tardes. Yeah. Shops are not normally open when we would say buenas noches in Spanish, but you know, if you go to uh, maybe a pub or something, you can say buenas noches. If you want to ask if they have uh, a certain item or a certain food, in this case, you can ask tienes, and then the thing, tienes huevos, for instance, do you have eggs, uh, or tienen. It doesn't matter, tienen is plural, so it could be if you go in a shop and there are several people there, but in general, you can, you know, if you're talking to a single person, you can say tienes, and that is fine. And, you know, the questions in Spanish, you know, you will go up at the end, tienen, tienes. And if you just want to say, uh, you know what you want, and you've seen it, for instance, you know, in the shop, you tell, quiero, I want, whatever the item is. Quiero azúcar. I want sugar. Quiero azúcar. So we have buenos días, buenas tardes. We've practiced that. Tienes o tienen and quiero. And now, uh, this is important because probably you'll notice and it's one of the things that um, 
English speakers tend to have more difficulty with. Although you've studied French or Italian or any other Latin language, you've probably noticed that the objects are gendered in all these languages. Um, and they are all male or female. Uh, I say, don't ask me why, I think it comes from the Latin, but you know. And the articles that accompany them then have to correspond to that gender. So, you know, if uh, Mesa is female, is la mesa. You cannot say el mesa, it doesn't go. So for instance, pastel, cake is male. So we can talk about el pastel, the cake, or un pastel, a cake. Um, as a summary, I put here which ones are the articles that go with which one. So uh, definite articles or articulos determinados in Spanish are the ones where you're pointing at a specific thing. Like, for instance, um, you know, I want this glass, it sería el vaso. This specific one is the. The would be el. El is like the. And for, fem uh, for feminine or female, object would be la. The plural would be los, and for females would be las. And when it's uh, indefinite articles, in Spanish, it's a bit different to in English. In English, you have a n or an, you know, a, a bottle, or you have, you know, an elephant, for instance. But in Spanish, you can have them in plural as well. So you have un, un pastel, or una, una mesa, for instance, and you, in plural, you would have unos pasteles, you, you, you have several of them, or unas. That's, uh, that's how it works in Spanish. And as I was saying, this, all of them would be equivalent to the, and this you would only use in English in singular, and it would be a, uh, an. So we have a few words that I thought you might find useful, but of course, remember that I leave you an, um, a link to my page in the blog where you have also, um, where you can find you know, some dictionaries, or if you have a paper dictionary, you can look for the words. I've given you clues here as to what the gender of the item is. For instance, helados, here is in plural, it would be los because it's a male object. If you have Un helado, because it's singular, it's un. And that's an ice cream. Helado, ice, helado. So un helado, remember, H is not pronounced. So we have los helados o un helado. Uh, chocolate is chocolate. As you can see, it's written the same, but as I've told you in Spanish, we pronounce every single letter. So you have chocolate. And in this case, it's male also, so it's el chocolate. El chocolate. Rice is arroz, you know, the double R, I know, sometimes can be a bit tricky, but it's just, you know, just go for it. And it's a male again, el arroz, el arroz. Uh, here we have wine. You probably know wine because, you know, uh, Spanish wine is quite popular, but a lot of people will pronounce it vino. No, in Spanish, the V and the B are the same. They are pronounced B. So you will have vino, not vino, but vino. All the V and V is the same in Spanish. And this one is male as well. So it would be el vino. Uh, water. This is a bit of a tricky one. Agua, the word is not particularly tricky. Uh, you know, it's similar to in um, Italian, for instance. Agua, but although it's a female, you use el. El agua, because if you say la agua, it's too many A's, and we don't have apostrophes in Spanish. So, you know, but it's a female. Anyway, the word is female, but it's el agua. So you can, but if you're asking for a bottle of water, it would be una botella de agua, so it's not a problem. So agua, cerveza, I think everybody learns uh, to ask for una cerveza, por favor, and that's because it's female. You see, it's una cerveza. Um, I've 
here put the clue to what the gender is so you can practice yourself and find which one is the article by yourself but you know we have refresco it's a soft drink refresco you know the r refresco but you can ask for a specific one you can ask for a coke it would be coca-cola etc milk is leche and it's female so leche leche cafe you can see the accent here so coffee is cafe like you know well you call a cafe the place it's also called a cafe in spanish but you know the drink itself is a cafe Carne, we've mentioned it when we were talking about carniceria. Carne is meat and is female. Jamón, I think you know jamón. A lot of people will be familiar with jamón. With jamón uh, serrano, uh, specifically from Spain, is jamón serrano. While in English you normally would say serrano ham, in Spanish you is the other way around. You have jamón serrano. Chicken is pollo. That is a double L, it's not pronounced as a single L, but it's a different sound, it's po yo. Pork is a tocino, tocino, and it's male as well, but um, you know, you will see that uh, unless you know it's, it's a full pig that you're asking for, um, and in that case it's normally cerdo, tocino, uh, it's, a lot of products are made of it, so you will you will see them and you will learn to love them, I think. They are very nice. There are a lot of varieties that you probably don't know. But, uh, you know, if you know some Italian uh, foods, they are quite similar, some of them. Huevos are X and they are male too. Huevos, remember H, you don't pronounce huevos. We have cheese, queso, queso. Male again. Pasta is written exactly the same and it sounds pretty much the same pasta. Pizza, uh, you know, people pronounce it a bit, you know, each person as they like, but if you pronounce it sort of an Italian sounding way, you're well ahead and it's a female as well. Pescado, we've talked about pescaderia, pescado is fish. Marisco, it's beautiful, here you can see some marisco, marisco is seafood. Fries or chips uh, are called the same in Spanish and they, you know, uh, potatoes, patatas. So we call them patatas fritas, fried potatoes, really. Patatas fritas and they are female. Normally, th normally, you know, sometimes it's not like that, but normally things that end in an A are female, but there are exceptions to the rule. But, you know, you're probably quite well off if you think that. Patatas fritas. Fruta, as I was saying, you know, it's an A, it's in an A, it's female, and is fruit. We've mentioned it before. Verduras. Verduras, remember, the V is not pronounced V in Spanish, it's B sound. Verduras, it's vegetables. Bread is pan, very similar to the French, you know, pan, pan. Pan, it's male. So, you know, we have pizza, pescado, marisco, patatas fritas, fruta, verduras, y pan. Now, we've ordered all these things, or we've picked them up. If we're in the supermarket, we grab some eggs, we grab some sugar, you know, whatever. And uh, so we go to the shop, or we get to the till, and we ask, uh, ¿cuánto es? How much is it? ¿Cuánto es? You see the accent in the A? ¿Cuánto es? O cuánto es todo? How much is everything? Cuánto es o cuánto es todo? If you know you are, you don't know, you don't, you cannot see the price on something. You can ask cuánto cuesta and show the uh, object or ask if you know the name or you have the dictionary. You can ask cuánto cuesta el vino o cuánto cuesta uh, la pizza. Cuánto cuesta? If it's plural. But, you know, cuánto cuesta, cuánto, you see again, cuánto is the same word, cuánto cuesta, uh, o a qué precio está, what price it is, you know, a qué precio están los huevos. But, uh, you know, this is if you're looking for a specific thing. If you just go to the end of, you know, to the end of your shop, you can ask cuánto es, o cuánto es todo. Of course, I know you love to be polite because we all do, 
So, you know, you can ask, uh, if you're asking any of these questions, you know, tiene or tienen, you can say, por favor. Remember, the V is not pronounced as V, but it's a B, so por favor, at is please, and I think most of you know that. But it can be used exactly the same as in English, you know, you can say, please, uh, can you tell me how much is it? Or you can say, por favor, cuánto es esto? Or you could say, cuánto es esto, uh, por favor? So you can use it either at the beginning or at the end. And of course, we, have, we know gracias or muchas gracias is thank you or thank you very much. Gracias, muchas gracias. Thank you or thank you very much. So as it says here, it's two magic words, uh, you know, gracias y por favor. I've created two quizlets to help you learn some more vocabulary. Of course, you can, you know, watch TV series, you can listen to the podcast that, you know, I've left you some links that I'll mention again on, on the, on the right up to the video. But, you know, I created two uh, quizlets that uh, you can use to learn some vocabulary. If you've never used Quizlet, it's, it's quite interesting because it's like flashcards, but you can, you know, some have explanations, some have pictures, and um, it's a bit of fun because, you know, you can play with it and you can listen to them, you can test yourself, you can try them in different orders. And as I say here, once you're on the site, remember to explore because there are plenty of useful materials and you can test yourself, practice pronunciation, check other topics because you're going to find that people, uh, you know, produce quizlets on all kinds of things, architecture, uh, history, and you can even create your own, so, you know, something that you know a lot about, you think oh, I'll do one of them. It's not very complicated because otherwise I wouldn't manage and you can really give it a go. So, um, I was, I'm just going to show it to you uh, briefly, just a second. E, let me just see here, just a moment. Uh, I think here, yes, here we are. So um, for instance, you know, you see where in the fruit one, you to join i think you just need to use you can use your google account or your facebook account is free uh, there is a paid version but unless you're going to use it professionally you don't need to so here for instance we have this and we don't know what they are called in spanish what is this what are strawberries in spanish so we click and it says it's la fresa ah la fresa you know the next one you what is oh okay yeah, you can see the picture bigger and you click on it and then it turns and it's la naranja and there's different settings here you know this is the flashcards uh, if you press learn that it will test you if you want to spell it for instance um, you see what happens melocotón it tells you, you know, melocotón. Not sure actually you could hear it, but you know, so you have to try and guess how do you write that. And it tells papaya. you if it's correct or not, papaya, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So that is how it goes. Um, and you know, you can try all the settings. Um, there are a variety of them. Uh, you can test yourself, as I was saying, you can try to write them, you know, if you see, and you know, rather than just looking at them, you can try to write the names. So just go and explore because it's worth um, doing really. It's, uh, it's quite a good uh, thing. And uh, remember that, uh, you know, I'll leave you links to my page where you can find plenty of other things. If you want to see any particular um, things that we discuss here in a video, you know, let me know. But I, I have a few ideas to keep going anyway. And of course, thank you very much. And muchas gracias.